February 1943, the night sky over Lincolnshire, England, was heavy with fog and the smell of fuel. RAF Woodhall. Spa airfield was alive. Mechanics shouting over roaring engines, bombers landing with damaged wings, and exhausted pilots stumbling out into the cold wind. Among the chaos stood Edward Eddie Collins, a 34-year-old British engineer with oil-stained hands and a stubborn grin. He wasn't the kind of man who followed rules. He was the kind who rewrote them. For months, Eddie had been obsessed with a question no one at the Royal Air Force could answer. Why did German radar always find their bombers before they even crossed the channel? The Germans called their radar system Freya, and it was devastatingly effective. No matter how fast, no matter how high, Allied bombers were tracked, hunted, and destroyed. But tonight, that was about to change. As the wind howled across the hangars, Eddie stood over a wooden de Havilland mosquito, its pale surface glimmering faintly under the floodlights. The plane looked almost delicate, built mostly of plywood and glue, yet it was one of the fastest aircraft in the world. Eddie believed that same wooden frame might be the key to defeating German radar. He had spent weeks secretly experimenting with non-metallic coatings, thin layers of special paint mixed with carbon dust, designed to scatter radio waves instead of reflecting them. It wasn't authorized. In fact, it was completely forbidden. Beside him, Arthur Bennett, a 42-year-old RAF test pilot, zipped his leather jacket and watched quietly. Arthur had flown dozens of missions over Germany and lost more friends than he cared to remember. When Eddie explained the idea, he simply nodded. All right then, he said. Let's see if your ghost trick really works. The two men worked in silence as they rolled the modified mosquito toward the edge of the airstrip. Snow flurries drifted down, melting on the warm exhausts. The propellers began to spin, slicing through the mist. Inside the dimly lit control tower, a radar operator turned his scope toward the departing plane. Usually the mosquito would appear as a bright green blip on the screen, clear, strong, impossible to miss. But tonight, the screen stayed almost empty. The signal flickered once, then vanished. The operator frowned and adjusted the dials. Nothing. The mosquito was gone. Down on the runway, Eddie grinned, hands trembling with adrenaline. His illegal experiment had just made the world's first radar-evading bomber take flight. For the first time in years, a British aircraft was truly invisible to German eyes. And in that moment, as the faint roar of the mosquito disappeared into the night, one thing became clear. The age of the ghost plane had begun. The next morning, the hangar was silent. The usual laughter of ground crews was gone, replaced by whispers. Everyone had heard the rumor. A mosquito had vanished from radar. Not crashed. Not shot down. Just vanished. Edward Collins, the rogue engineer behind it all, hadn't slept. He sat on a wooden crate, rubbing his eyes, waiting for the inevitable summons from command. He knew what was coming. When you break Royal Air Force regulations, someone always notices. Sure enough, the heavy boots of Group Captain Thomas Wilkes echoed through the hangar. Wilkes, mid-fifties, sharp jaw, silver hair, always immaculate in uniform, was known for his zero-tolerance approach. He stopped in front of Eddie, hands clasped behind his back. Collins, he said quietly, I hear you've been painting aircraft without permission. Eddie hesitated. Sir, it wasn't just paint. It was Wilkes cut him off. You tampered with an operational bomber. That's court-martial material. But then Wilkes's tone softened. And yet, German radar never saw it, did they? Eddie didn't answer. He didn't have to. Wilkes glanced toward the mosquito sitting on the runway, its pale skin gleaming like frost. He lowered his voice. We're flying it again, tonight, over the coast. Full reconnaissance sweep, you'll ride along. That night, under a moon half hidden by clouds, the modified mosquito was rolled out once more. Arthur Bennett, the test pilot, fastened his flight helmet, his face set in quiet determination. Eddie climbed in beside him, notebook in hand, heart racing. The twin Merlin engines roared to life, and the aircraft surged forward into the dark. Within minutes, they were above the North Sea, skimming the edge of German radar coverage. Eddie watched the altimeter and the trembling needles, his mind buzzing. 
Back at the Luftwaffe radar station on the French coast, German operators leaned over their scopes. They saw dozens of blips, but not the mosquito. It was invisible again. Inside the cockpit, Arthur glanced over his shoulder. Still nothing? He asked. Eddie grinned. Nothing. We're ghosts, Arthur. They can't see us. The mosquito slipped deep into enemy territory, cameras clicking silently below. They flew over coastal defenses, over searchlights that swept empty skies, over gun emplacements whose crews stared into the night, unaware that a British bomber was photographing everything above their heads. By dawn, the mosquito was back in England. The film canisters they carried revealed perfect, crisp images of German positions taken from the heart of enemy territory without a single alarm being raised. As the sun broke over the horizon, Group Captain Wilkes stepped out of the operations hut, watching the mosquito taxi to a halt. He didn't smile, but his voice carried a hint of awe. Congratulations, Collins, he said. You may have just changed air warfare forever. Eddie exhaled slowly, finally realizing the weight of what they'd done. The experiment that started in secret had become something far greater, a weapon of invisibility. And somewhere across the channel, German radar crews would spend the day staring at their empty screens, wondering how the British had made a bomber disappear. Within days, whispers spread through the Luftwaffe. Radar stations along the French coast were reporting the same strange phenomenon, brief flickers on their screens, followed by nothing. No return signal. No confirmation. It was as if some aircraft were simply flying through the waves of their radar, like ghosts. At Luftwaffe Command Paris, General Otto Drexler, a 49-year-old officer with sharp blue eyes and a temper to match, studied a stack of reports. Every one of them told the same story. Radar contact lost. Aircraft invisible, he slammed a hand on the desk. Nothing disappears from Freya. Nothing. But something had. Meanwhile, across the channel, inside the research hangar at RAF Woodhall Spa, Edward Collins and his small team were running out of supplies. And time. Their paint mixture was improvised, their tests unofficial, and their results classified above top secret. They had proven it worked. But now they needed to perfect it. Arthur Bennett, the test pilot, leaned against the wing of the mosquito, arms crossed. You realize what happens if the Germans figure out how we did this? Eddie nodded. Then we stop being ghosts. And start being targets. Late that evening, Group Captain Thomas Wilkes entered with new orders. Headquarters wants a deep strike. Berlin itself. One plane. In and out before they even know you were there. Arthur froze. Berlin? That's suicide. Wilkes looked at him firmly. Not if they can't see you. Hours later... The mosquito thundered down the runway again, its pale wooden body gleaming faintly in the moonlight. The night sky stretched wide and silent as they crossed the channel. No alarms, no radar pings, no pursuit. Inside the cockpit, Eddie's hands trembled on his notebook. Arthur flew low, threading between clouds, his voice steady over the intercom. Altitude holding. Berlin in 40 minutes, Eddie smiled nervously. And still no sign of German radar. But deep in France, one radar station finally caught a flicker, just for a second. A blip appeared, then vanished. The German operators leaned in. Ein Geistflugzeug? One muttered. A ghost plane? By the time they sent the warning, it was already too late. The mosquito was over Berlin, cameras clicking, instruments humming, utterly unseen. They flew so close that Eddie could see the faint orange glow of streetlights far below. Arthur kept the engines low, whispering through the clouds. They passed over anti-aircraft batteries whose crews stood idle, scanning the sky for a bomber that wasn't there. When the Mosquito finally turned back toward England, the mission had lasted just two hours. No one had fired a shot. No one had sounded an alarm. At dawn, the photographs lay spread across the operations table crystal clear images of the German capital. Eddie stood there in silence as Wilkes looked on, astonished. Berlin, the captain murmured. And they never saw a thing. Eddie smiled faintly. Maybe that's the point, sir, he said. If they can't see us, they can't stop us. 
By March 1943, the German high command was desperate. Reports from radar outposts were becoming impossible to ignore. Blips were appearing and vanishing mid-flight. Reconnaissance photos were emerging from cities that had never been bombed. And Luftwaffe patrols were chasing empty skies. Inside a dimly lit control room in Brest, General Otto Drexler stood before a giant radar display. Technicians were arguing in panic. Sir, the British planes, they disappear when they approach the coast. Drexler clenched his jaw. Impossible. Radar doesn't lie. But the truth was written across the empty screens. Radar had met its first true enemy, silence. Meanwhile, back at RAF Woodhall Spa, Edward Eddie Collins and test pilot Arthur Bennett were being hailed as heroes, though only in whispers. Their work was now a classified project under the code name Operation Ghost Light. Eddie's illegal paint formula was no longer a secret. It was being mass-produced, tested on dozens of mosquitoes. Inside the workshop, Eddie wiped grease from his hands as Arthur stepped in, holding a folded telegram. They want us to train a new team, Arthur said. High command's making this official. Eddie raised an eyebrow. Official? The same people who wanted to court-martial me a month ago? Arthur chuckled. Seems ghosts are more useful than prisoners, but the success came with a cost. Every mission they flew deeper into German territory, the risk grew. The Luftwaffe began experimenting with new detection methods, infrared, acoustic sensors, even searchlights triggered by sound. They called it Jagd auf den Geist, the hunt for the ghost. One night in April, a mosquito squadron flying near Bremen reported strange new tracking lights sweeping the sky. One aircraft didn't make it back. Arthur stared at the map in silence. They're learning, he muttered. Eddie nodded grimly. Then we'll have to stay one step ahead. The following months became a race between innovation and discovery. British engineers refined the stealth coating, reducing the radar reflection even further. The mosquito evolved into something almost supernatural, fast, silent, and invisible. It was no longer just a bomber. It was a message to the world. Intelligence and creativity could outfight brute power. By late 1944, the Mosquito was flying missions straight into the heart of Nazi Germany, often returning without a single bullet hole. German officers, baffled and humiliated, began calling it Der Unsichtbare Tod, the Invisible Death. When the war finally ended, thousands of missions had been flown under the cover of that wooden miracle. Not one enemy radar operator ever truly understood how. Years later, Edward Collins would walk through the abandoned hangars of Woodhall Spa, the floor still stained with oil and ghostly silence. He would pause beside an old mosquito fuselage, its pale wooden frame faded but intact. He smiled quietly and whispered, You were never supposed to exist. But you changed everything. The camera slowly pans upward toward the cloudy English sky. A faint engine hum echoes in the distance, fading into nothing. Narrator, final line, they called it a ghost. But it was never a legend. It was proof that even in war the mind can make miracles.